Hello, I'm Steve with Touch of the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. I wanted to talk today about kind of, you know, what's Jesus telling you to do, showing you to do, giving you instructions to do, directions, um, God or the Holy Spirit, all three. Um, but anyhow, I'm going to kind of dive into it and kind of just, this is part two. I'm going to just kind of stay in the series for a little bit. I don't even know if series is the right word, but anyhow. I uh, had a dream about six months ago. And in this dream, I've had a lot of visions and now dreams. It's just one of the ways God deals with me. But um, in this dream, He gave me scriptures. He's been giving me scriptures and dreams and early in the morning and just different times. But He's, I was dreaming. He said, John, Matthew seventeen two, John seventeen two, and Luke seventeen two are all a message for this hour, and I want you to bring bring that message forth. And then I had a vision too, and I may share that later on, but not not in this video. Um, but so then I woke up. I was like, man, I better look these up, you know. And I do study as much as I can. Um, I do know a lot of scriptures, but I don't have addresses. I don't know specific scriptures, so I had to look it up. So anyhow, I'm gonna. It fits in with what I'm about to say that God told me to do recently. But this in this dream. Um, I'm going to go to Matthew 17, 2 is about the transfiguration, and that's a long story, and how God's glory came down upon him, and this is my son whom I'm well pleased, and it's just, it's an awesome story, and, and, and you can go into a lot of depth in different directions with it. Um, John 17, 2 is the one I'm going to highlight and read, and then I'll tell you what Luke 17, 2 says. But John 17, 2 says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may also glorify you. You have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And then you can read the whole thing. It talks about his glory. And, and then... Um, that was what he told me recently, a couple months ago, to write a book about Christ in you, the hope of glory, and how Jesus was his glory. In John 3.16, when we accept Jesus into our heart, into our lives, and then we'd be, you know, following through with the rest of the steps of the, being filled, and filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, which is our comforter to lead, guide, and direct us, all three live in us, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, we become His glory because He's got, because we're His story. Um, so, and then He told me to write this book. And I had already put in a, I already got one book out about visions and you just email me and I'll send you a free copy or it's on Amazon, available on Amazon for 14 bucks. Um, but, you know, you can email me, I'll send you a free copy, no, no issues. But, those are some of the things that God's dealing with us about doing. And sorry, my niece came home. My dogs like her and don't like her. But um, so Luke seventeen two talks about it'd be better if a millstone was tied around their neck and they were cast into the sea. I'm still kind of trying to fit that in how that's part of His glory, but it's kind of like Jesus has your back. God has your back. And so, you just, you know, it's all kind of fitting in and tying in to things. So, the message I'm giving you today is directional. What's God showing you to do? Because we're all as vessels, you know? We all have purpose, reasons, and specific things that God wants us to do. Deals with some of us differently, maybe, maybe, you know, in different ways. Um, we're all equal. Just read Matthew 17, 20. The equality piece is there. It cuts across gender, race, all the issues of life, a hierarchy in the church, whether you're the janitor or the senior pastor, equal. Sorry, guys. Some of the big-name ministries may not like it. I'm not run for president. I'm not trying to have a popularity contest. I'm just a vessel. We're all vessels. And you guys that are listening are vessels and have a specific purpose. It may be, you may have a 60-hour work week, 
And maybe uh, you know, a lot of retailers are working on Sundays and you can't get to church. Maybe. Church is not your salvation. It's important, yes. Granted, to get strength and build up and edify and just... It's, it is part of it is part of life and it is necessary. But if you can't make it, God, God you know, you, you may just be deep in your Bible and reading your Bible and interjecting that into your children. Teaching them. You know, I, mean, I don't know. We all have specific purposes and missions in life and direction and they're all important. That's what I'm, that's the message. Your personal relationship with Jesus has the utmost importance because you're important. We put too much emphasis on stuff in the church but and in the world. Status, positions, you know, who you know, da da da, money, no money. I get it. This, this is part, you know, part of the dreams that the Lord, things that the Lord's been telling me to do. I understand that I'm not narrow-minded. It takes money. He gave me over 30 cities. Give me a dream about Montana, and then he told me it's Bozeman, Montana. There's a revival going to break forth out there. Connecticut, Vermont, uh, Italy, Texas. Uh, we just came back from a trip in normal Illinois, but this last one, he sent me on a journey, and it cost us about three grand, you know, out of our pocket. I had to take it out of savings. If they do the math, we're gone 14 days. Um, and I didn't want to go. I was like, man, gotta, you know, I kind of need another car. You know, my car's got 200,000 miles on it. It runs okay. It runs pretty good, but my wife's got a decent car, too. Um, but it's like, you know, that. I want to buy a four or five thousand dollar car. Well, three grand is almost there. But God's like, no, why don't you go do this? And what He did was about a month ago, He told me in a dream, I want you to go to Lahiton, and it's in Pennsylvania. Well, I googled it, and a town called Lahiton comes up. So we went. But He gave me cities. He told me to go to Lisbon, Tennessee, Lisbon, Connecticut, Lisbon. My, Missouri and uh, Lisbon, Georgia, and they're all cities, except Lisbon, Georgia. It's a lake now, but it was a, town, a city up until the eight, late 1800s. So he, he gave me about 20 or 20 of them, or 10 of them, a, bu a bunch. I'm like, God, oh, I can't go, and that's just too many, and that's that's just you know a little bit of break here, God. That's just too much to do. All these cities. You know, my wife and I, you know, I help my wife work. Some. But she, you know, she has a pretty busy job. So I kind of help her a little bit. Um, but we just, you know, we couldn't get the time off. It was just really busy. Just a lot going on at this time in her life. Um, and so I was like, man, God, you know. She told me this like a month ago. So, I'm going to keep this to 10 minutes. So, I'm like, okay, God, so we'll go. Okay, so but so I write down my book. I just don't know when. Then he deals with me a couple days later, and he says, I want you to go soon, as soon as next week. This was like three weeks ago. And uh, my wife can't get off work. We just came from a trip on the 4th of July. We've had vacations. In April, on our anniversary, she just doesn't have the time off, availability to take off. How's that going to work? It's not. You know, we just can't do it. So, it wasn't just the money. It was, too, well, mostly it was the time, you know. Of course I didn't want to spend the money. Of course I didn't want to take 14 days to drive all over across the country. It's 2,000 miles away and live out of a car and all this. And, it's, you know. I'd like to go on a cruise to Alaska, or something Hawaii, or someplace cool, but you know, I'm down in Pennsylvania with four thousand people. But I'm gonna be obedient to God, so it's like, okay, God, you want to go soon, and then, so I'm just kind of put that in a prayer mail. Okay, God, you know, but I don't understand it. Well, two days later, we meet with our church pastor, and he tells my wife, he said, you need to take some time off because she's been really, our church just exploded, and there's just been a lot of stuff on. Um, and it's like, so, we're going to give you a sabbatical, some time off, two weeks. Like, there you go, open door. But, 
you know, there was some things in there that still needed to be kind of ironed out. Um, and, but it all worked. It all started transpiring. So we went to these different cities. Awesome stuff. Things did awesome things. I had a little bit of direction. One was to go to this one town, find the newspaper reporter. And that was the only direction I got in one of the, in one of the towns. I was like, okay. So we went, got to this newspaper. My wife's like, what are we doing here? I don't know how dolls to come, so I go to the front desk. I said, "Ma'am, is there any chance, you know, any opportunity that we can talk to one of the reporters?" And she looked at me kind of funny, and it's like, "Well, okay, let me see if I can find somebody." And she did, and the guy came down and took us up to this conference room. We ministered up for over an hour, so I listened to us for an hour. Just things like that throughout the whole trip, and just open doors and orchestrated things and just you know so what's he telling you to do but then just came back from getting gas back in Dallas get, getting gas in my car run into a guy there that looks like he just got ran over by a truck beat up bad looking needed gas money just looked really rough an older guy told him sure I had ten dollars and Jesus loves you because I always do that I carry a little bit of cash with me now and I'm like Jesus loves you so it was kind of an open door to minister to him so that's here in Dallas I'm like God why can't we just do that I'm right around the corner there's people all around why do we have to go two thousand miles and spend thousands of dollars and but there was over twelve different people that I'll tell the stories as this as this series progresses but each time I may tell a story but and one was about the newspaper guy, there's other ones too, but it was just all these intersections that God created and opened and atmospheres and things that transpired to get us there. So it's like, okay, so what's he telling you to do? What is he dream what are you dreaming about? What is your direction? What you know? So that's one, your personal relationship with Jesus, utmost importance. The equality piece. God doesn't care about all this other stuff. Man does. Puts emphasis on who you are in the church, who you are in the world. God will use any available vessel. He's got a specific purpose. If you're listening to this, he's got a specific purpose for you. You've got a purpose-driven life. We minister at a homeless shelter, and those people are pretty beat up. Yeah, granted, a lot of them are there self-inflicted. They're there for a reason. A lot of them caused it. I get it. I understand it. But they're still God's glory. So that's kind of the other part of the message. We're all at God's glory, and it's time for us to shine in this world. Um, and all this other stuff that may and may not transpire, you know, that's a whole nother message. Uh, this one's getting kind of long. I'm sorry. That's a whole nother message for another hour. Uh, it's just time for us to shine, to be His church, to be His glorious bride. Of course not everybody's going to be, because not everybody's listening. But if you are, it's time to be His glory. So anyhow, what's God showing you? Um, email me at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com for my copy of the free book. Um, in a couple months, I'm going to have the other one out. Uh, Love you. Tune in. A uh, couple other awesome YouTube channels. Tune in to... You just look up You Room Dallas. Or look up Peter Lewis, Braveheart Ministries. Those are some other awesome ministries. One's our church. One's a, a, a good friend of ours. Um, just awesome stuff going on out there. It's time to do what God's telling you to do. So what's He telling you to do? You know, put it, share it with me. Share it with the... People that are, you know, email me, share it with the, on my YouTube channel, whatever, you know. But what's he showing you to do? Go with the obedience. Because sometimes I fall back on the scripture. This is what I'm going to end with. I'm like, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. I didn't understand this trip to Pennsylvania. Didn't want to go. Didn't want to spend thousands of dollars. Driving the last part of the trip, drove for three days straight to get home. I was ready to get home. Long eight, nine hour days, tired, grouchy a little bit, kind of, wanting to eat, wanting to play, you know, the countryside was beautiful, mountains were beautiful, I'm going to tell you about the 
some of the experiences. There was some rest mixed in with some ministry stuff. It was just awesome things God did on the direction of this journey. Go. But it might be to your neighbor down the street. It might be to your children. It might be to your grandchildren. It might be to your wife. It might be, I don't know, a combination of all of them. You know, what's God telling you to do? We're his vessels. We're his glory. Shine, guys. Let him pour out through you. So anyhow, that's my message, and I'm sorry to be so long. I really didn't want to be that long. It's hard not to be. It really is. But anyhow, God bless you. Um, I'll put another one out uh, maybe tomorrow or so. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in once again. Steve with Touch of the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. You can email me at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com or, you know, go through the YouTube. Please forward this to somebody. Comment on it. Just I want to hear from you. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.